Hi everyone this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music in this lesson i'm going to cover five approaches which i regularly use in my music to create what you could call as thematic chord progressions or movie like chord progressions or epic chord progressions or basically any scenario where the environment you're trying to write music for is on the more surreal side you know you're you're writing music about aliens or zombies or batman and stuff like that also when you're writing lyrics which are not very standard you could use these chord progressions or you can use this approach or these approaches to come up with any chord progression which doesn't sound too cliched or too popular or <clears throat> run of the mill if you will right guys so uh, stick around till the very end there are five approaches and uh, it'll be great if you can bring out your keyboards get a, a book along and uh, follow through and all of the notes to supplement this lesson will be on our patreon channel and you'll get the notes for pretty much this lesson as well as all lessons which have been done in the past and anything we are going to do in the future the notes are there you'll also get staff notation when needed uh, midi files backing tracks and so on right so let's get started with our lesson so the first approach i have for you to build chord progressions which sound surreal or mysterious or spooky or you know anything which is not out of the ordinary would be to just go out of the scale so you will need to have some kind of a rule or some kind of a structure to allow you to create non diatonic stuff that means stuff or music or chords which are out of the scale and whenever we try to make anything in music there has to be some some kind of symmetry some kind of order some forms of rules and regulations but there are so many rules that that's what makes our art form that creative right so this is one of the many rules which may not be there in too many textbooks so it uses what we pretty much learn every other day the to the topic intervals and you take intervals which are very common for the year intervals of thirds are very very common so what i tend to do is if i take let's say an e minor chord and start with e minor i'm not at all telling myself oh which scale is this part part of is it part of like e something you know i just know okay it's e minor chord okay there we have it and now journey towards the next chord via a interval and a third interval is always going to sound symmetric it's always going to make the music lead to the next event so e minor if you can study your thirds from e you have two kinds of thirds we learn you have the minor third e to g and you have the major third e to g sharp so what's going to happen is if you play an e minor and follow it with another minor chord which is a minor third apart you can play a g minor after that you get a very mysterious sound you'll also notice that e minor and g minor are not really part of any scale right so e minor can go to g minor and then can go to b flat minor which is again a minor third from e so you have e to the g to the b flat and you may be guessing it from b flat let me go another minor third b flat to the c sharp minor so let me just play those four chords together we go you could sing one of the notes of those chords or maybe played on a on a theremin synth lead to make it very very uh, horror like so you go e minor minor third to g minor minor third to b flat minor minor third up to c sharp minor 
and most of the symmetric things in music sound beautiful and also very different so what i mean by symmetric is if you take let's say the circle of fifths which is a great tool to study the geometry of our chords if you build a diamond from anywhere if you build a diamond or what is a diamond also called if you look at it another way a square i guess right so if you look at a diamond and start building it from e you will find that the diamond of the circle of fifths creates this this sound this diminished seventh vibe which i am trying to give out why is it a diminished seventh vibe because e to the g g to the b flat b flat to the c sharp all form a diminished seventh chord and diminished seventh chords are symmetric you could call this e diminished seventh g diminished seventh b flat diminished seventh or c sharp diminished seventh and they all pretty much sound the same uh, we've done a very detailed lesson on diminished seventh chords and also half diminished seventh chords we'll put the link in the description and we've also done a playlist which i've called as my favorite chords of all time so you can check out that as well which gives you a lot of these interesting chords which you may not find in conventional music okay so that that was it that was a theory behind this particular technique so you take minor chords galore but you take the minor chords which are displaced a minor third apart now you may be arguing uh, what about the major third right so the major third from e would also work as a great transition chord so what's a major third from e g sharp you get a very lonely sound if you ask me you find this a lot in edward scissor hands a great johnny depp movie you should check it out so so major thirds galore what happens is you get you get an augmented chord you get e g sharp and c which already is a very very dreamy uh, mystic uh, mysterious chord So now if you build minor chords out of this That's your composition right there and have fun making a melody on that that will be even more cooler <laughs> some vibe violin with a lot of vibrato that'll sound really cool okay so you may be thinking i moved up a minor third and a major third and i've ended up getting a quite unique set of chords in in the progression what about major chords over these same intervals that will work awesome too so you can take the same diminished seventh family if i can call it that and look at all the elements in the diminished seventh family e g b flat d flat and now build major chords from within that family each root will form a major chords so that's e major g major going to b flat major going to c sharp major right it's like an explorer's chord progression if you ask me G B flat. It's like you've gone inside the pyramids for the first time or something, which is on my bucket list as well. Let's all do that. Okay. So basically, intervals of thirds are great because they make the music non-diatonic. At the same time, they make the music symmetric. And another way, word for symmetric could be predictable. So we make music ironically for people who don't. really no music for the most part so they need familiarity they need patterns and this tool will really help because you're going in defined periodic intervals which are equal namely thirds minor third and major third and uh, the notes will be there where you can look at the circle of fifths to to really zone in on the shapes behind the chords so i encourage you to invest some time and learn the circle of fifths really well so this is one technique which i use a lot 
in my music uh, the song you heard in the intro video is a song i composed with my band called plight you can check it out and we'll put the link in the description let me let me know what you think about the song it's a bit spooky we've done a little bit of back masking and all of these the scary stuff in our production but yeah it's a fun song but no may not be the right word but still check it out in the description okay let's move on and the next serial chord progression if you will or mysterious chord progression technique will be using the mysterious minor 6th interval so it's an interval like any other but if you take a minor chord i'm just going to take c minor for uh, the simplicity so this is our good old friend c minor so the minor 6th interval can be added to this particular chord what's a minor 6th it's a 6th in this case c d e f g a minus 1 so that's your minor 6th even if i play it with nothing it sounds very mysterious doesn't it very detective like very james bond like and so on now if you stack this up with a minor chord start sounding very very spooky and very stranger things like or very x files like you know you can just do that you can take a minor chord and just stack it up with its minor 6th uh, interval that's a flat in this case and if you apply the earlier technique skipping intervals go down a third go up a third c minor yearning e flat maybe also you can go random like c to f g a Okay, and this sounds really cool on a minor chord. You get that, as I said, Stranger Things or X Files sound, which I think is even there in the theme music of those two respective uh, TV shows. You could also start with a major chord and and do the same thing. You get the minor sixth. Of course, in this case, theoretically, you may feel it as an augmented fifth. So an augmented fifth is a sharp five, while a minor sixth is a flat six, right? Minor generally means you're going flat from the major, and augmented generally means you're going up, you're raising it, you're going sharpening by one. So A major or C major with its sixth, in this case flat six. Again, a very mysterious chord, very uncertain sound. and you can combine this with other chords of the same flavor right so that's what i call is the mysterious minor 6th interval chord you take a major or a minor chord and you stack it up with this minor 6th interval right so moving forward the third technique to create very unique sounding interesting chord progressions very filmy uh, movie theme like progressions would be a concept called chord trees now if you take a note c all you have to do is ask yourself how many triads have the note c in them so it's quite easy if you visualize you have c major c minor the namesake majors and minors then what else do we have which note or which chord has c as its fifth that would be f major f minor so all these chords are tied to the tree of c as i call it so the branches of the note c are c major c minor they are all linked in some way f major f minor so they may not be linked via a scale as what we learn in conventional theory but they are linked by this concept what i call as chord trees c major c minor f major f minor now the others are rather tricky you have to ask yourself c is the minor third off and c is the major third off so to answer that question c is the major third of a flat major 
and C is the minor third of A minor. A B C A minor. So now if you fool around with these chords, now just look at what is conventional. Is it conventional to play C major going to A minor? I think it is. And then A minor to F major. Yeah, very conventional. Right? So how do you break the convention? Maybe do a C major to a chord which you would not play or find in the major scale chord family. So that C major gliding perfectly well or sliding perfectly well to its friend F minor which we didn't really learn in the major scale or even in the minor scale. We, of course we would learn this with a mode of the melodic minor a topic I'll definitely cover soon. You could also do C merged up with a a flat major and mind you these are all branches of the tree of C so you don't have to always play C major with F minor and then C major with A flat major you can merge A flat major with A minor because what do both those chords have in common our friend C isn't it Then you have C. You can do C major to F minor. You can do C major A minor is very vanilla sounding. But C major to A flat major. A flat major to A minor. A minor to F minor. F minor to C major. C major to maybe E major. Now here I've left the tree of C and I've hopped onto the tree of E. And now E, the tree of E will have its branches. E major and C major. So chord trees is a very visual chapter which we cover a lot in our uh, school's theory lessons. You could consider signing up for a structured course where we teach all this stuff. Right? So that is irregular chord progressions using... Uh, a, a very interesting chapter called as chord trees. Let's move on. Right. So we looked at the minor sixth interval over a major and minor chord. You could also stack up what we call as a tritone interval, which I'm sure you, some of you may know. The tritone is not nothing but a five minus one in, in the key of C. Perfect fifth is G. You go down by one chromatic step and you get... F sharp or you go C to F you go up by one chromatic step you still get that F sharp so a tritone is either referred to as an augmented fourth or a diminished fifth a sharp four or a flat five so what we can do with a tritone is again like I told you earlier with a sixth flat six you stacked it along with a major and minor the same story with a tritone so you play a major chord and the moment you do that You get a very out of planet earth sound. Okay. Very dreamy sound. Almost raga like in nature. You can all, almost imagine a scale through this chord. And the same would be done with a minor chord. Great for riffs. That's how you use the tritone. A lot of ways to use the tritone as we've covered regularly on our YouTube channel with so many theory and piano videos. But yeah, I just thought that this is an interesting way to just take one chord and make it quite interesting and use it in a theme, use it in a progression. I've done this a lot with some of my riffs, so you should check them out on our website. We have a website which is filtered out well. Okay, and uh, last but not least, I've left something which seems very obvious, but doesn't sound very obvious if you 
dive into it as a concept. It's what I call as spread chords or spread triads without their roots as the base. So let's first look at what a spread chord is. We have our chords, C major, which can be played in inversions, right? You have root position, first inversion, and the second inversion, G, C, E. But you can take the same chord played at the deep end in the bass clef and you find that it the sound can turn over its head. It doesn't sound as stable as you play it here. You can voice it differently. Now, if you play it with the same voicing in the left hand down below, what they don't tell us in the textbooks is sounds absolutely nonsense. It's almost unusable. It just sounds horrible. So we anyway need to develop a spread technique where one way to voice the chord would be the root, the fifth, and the third. And as you can see, I'm on my second last C of the piano and it still holds its ground. It sounds very, very crystal clear. Right? And isn't this how color also works? The darker the color, the tougher it is to have a contrast between them or a distinction between them. So I would argue it's the same with musical pitch. The lower it is, it's tough for our ear to make them out. It's easier when it's higher. Same thing with colors, right? So this is what you call as a spread chord and spread chords have three. We've done a lot of YouTube videos on that and whenever you watch a YouTube video on our channel, especially a video released in 2022 and beyond, there are bound to be a lot of other videos which complement these topics well or support these topics well with further study and a lot more in-depth study. So another thing I would encourage you to do is go to nathanielschool.com, head over to our free tutorial section which are pretty much all of our YouTube lessons but you do not have to rely on the challenges of the amazing YouTube algorithm to find our video content. You can go to our website, filter it and decide a topic. It, there are some really well done tags which we've spent a lot of time doing so that will be very helpful. So this is a topic called spread chords. Right, so now taking the spread chord, this is the standard way to play C major, C, G, E but you can now play it as E, G, C as well. So that's E, C, G. This creates a very different vibe for our C major chord, right? The E, C, G seems to take us to F major that way. And then can also play C major like this, G, E, C, which seems to want to resolve to G major. Then if you take C major with E in the bass, can do C minor that's D minor none of these chords sound the way we hear them normally so especially when you invert them first of all playing chords spread is unique enough but then if you use spread chords with inversions the inversions which are not really taught conventionally in the books as piano inversions you do have these in fact we should probably have a chapter in future books where these are the left hand inversions and those are the right hand inversions i wish things were covered or explained that way but anyway so you have c major e flat major so what you could do is play around and also observe the uh, also be adventurous about the uncertainties of what could go on. So if you take C major, just look at your, your fingers and just tell yourself, okay, let me just move my pinky to C sharp. Let's move the, the this thing, the thumb to A. Creates a very different vibe.
things like that you could just fool around with one note here and there and it becomes a completely different vibe or a different triad altogether right guys so that's what i plan to cover in this lesson and i guess i have covered the stuff which i plan to cover in this lesson so in the first segment we looked at intervals of thirds and you took triads major and minor and shifted them across that symmetrically then we looked at the mysterious minor sixth interval which we could add to any triad major or minor then we looked at irregular chord tree triads where you group chords together based on a note which they have in common example c would have six major uh, and minor chords three major and three minor right then we looked at adding a tritone interval over a major and minor chord for some very uh, diabolic and interesting music if you ask me and then we looked at revisiting the triad itself and just playing it down below in the bass register of our instrument it could even be done on a cello you must have you should listen to the bach cello suite that's where this idea of uh, spread triads would would have definitely come to me and a lot of you people watching this video so listen to a lot of bach he uses a lot of the cello and the way the cello is used harmonic is 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 really really interesting right guys hope you found the lesson useful again do consider getting a copy of the notes on our patreon channel that would help support our channel as well and if you'd like something regular structured like a full time course or a semester at our school you could consider going to nathanielschool.com you will find the relevant links in the description and thanks a ton for watching but then if you have uh, not subscribed to the channel i'm not going to say thanks to you so do it right now hit that button button and we do a lot of content it'll be great if you can even hit that bell icon for regular notifications whenever we release a youtube lesson thanks again guys thanks a ton stay safe this is jason